everybody this is a quick tutorial on how to do a cutout in Photoshop I'm going to show you a couple of things here really quick um, and then I'd like you to go on and have a look at InDesign 1 which will show you how to use them in InDesign so for this file I have this particular picture to cut out here she is um, she's wearing a Texan hat she's against a relatively plain background which helps if you want to do this thing, so though you don't have to have that. And if you look at the layers, um, you'll notice that if I switch this one off, there's a picture of a Arizonian desert scene that you can put her into. But it's just to demonstrate a cutout, and in particular, it's going to demonstrate how you can cut out around complicated surfaces like that hairline that you can see there. And how you can do this real quick as well. Um, that's important. You can do this by hand. And I have, and for some pictures, you will need to do little bit by little bit. But sometimes there's a tool that can help us. In this case, we've got a really useful tool. It's over here. It's with the erasers. It's this one here. It's called the background eraser. And this is not a new tool. It's been around since, I don't know, I think it's CS5. Um, that's like 15 years ago. So, you know, it's had some practice. So choose a suitable size brush. And I suggest you pick something that's pretty big. A bit bigger than that, maybe. Make sure the hardness is all the way up. Um, you don't want to be fussing around with semi-raised bits. And I'll talk you through it as we go. So we've got that piece there. And what I'm going to do is... I'm going to click it now. If you look very carefully, you can see there's a cross in the middle of that. If I click it, it erases everything that is within a range of colors inside that circle. So up here, I've got the tolerance. At the moment, it's 50%. That's going to be too high. For this, I need around 20%, and I would use that as a starting point if I'm doing something like that. If it wants to go 21, no big deal. Now, there's two ways that this tool works. One is called continuous. And that means it erases everything that's that color until it hits a boundary. In other words, when the color changes, and then it stops. On the other hand, if you click on there, there's another one that says discontinuous, in which case it leaps over and carries on erasing if it can see the same color. And I'm going to show you how both of those work in this. Now, instead, Lee, if you're going to do this cutout professionally, um, using this tool, I'd expect you to do it in under about two minutes, um, which is pretty rapid, I'm going to tell you. So first of all, I'm going to use the continuous setting. And the reason I'm going to use that there is because I'm going to first click is going to be there. And you can see it's neatly removed the boundary. If I undo that and change it over to the discontinuous, you'll see that it leaps over and it starts move, removing the greys and the feathers. We don't want that. So I'm going to undo that and just go back. So I'm now going to do this. I hope you're timing me. So I'm going to go around the edge of the hat. It doesn't do anything until it hits the next bit of tone. Down there, round there, I'm going to just click it once there. I'll do a similar thing on this side. And you can catch up with the rest of the sky. Don't go near the hair yet. And then down the side, there we go. Missed a bit there. Watch out for those. There we go. Under the arms. Now I'm going to, I slightly overdid that. See, I went into the hair and you probably can't see it very clearly. There's like a grey mist there. I'm just going to undo that. It takes one second and just go up a bit closer. That's better. And the rest of this sky you can remove. It takes a couple of minutes. Whoops, missed a bit. Sometimes I even use a bigger brush for the job like this. Now why hang around? 
Okay, so I've got that far. I'm now going to go to the discontiguous setting. The hair is a gingery colour. And so therefore my brush won't harm it, but it will allow me to go around those flyaway hairs. I think that's done it. Have a look in a minute. Do the same over here. So here I'm going to just change the sampling. This is a continuous sampling. I'm going to change it for a spot sample. So I'm going to sample the grey. And then I can move it around there and not worry about getting rid of it. I might have to just... There it goes. Just do a couple of bits there. Do the same this side. Oops. Got it. And there we go. So there's my cutout. And that's taken me just over two and a half minutes for the commentary, I think. If you want to see how good it is, let's just zoom in on a couple of places. So there, for example, you can see the clouds to the cutaway hair. And if I come across here, once again, you can see the clouds through the cutaway here. Now, um, just before I finish at this point, an often said criticism of this is that it's against a plain background. That makes life easy. You guys want to be professional designers and art workers and whatever. Um, you can stage that kind of picture. If it's just you or somebody you know, you can do it against a plain coloured wall. Do it against the sky. Yeah. It's not much excuse. If you're in a studio, of course, you can use a plain paper background. Actually, if you want to try an experiment, flatten this. So that will be in the layers. You come over to here and say flatten. And then you could try doing it again. And you'll find that it works pretty well. Because even though this is sky and sand, there's a contrast in the colours and so they will remove. I'm going to save this picture for your next test. So up to file. Now, when you save any picture, when you've manipulated it in Photoshop, unless there's a very good reason, always save it as a Photoshop PSD file. They're the most versatile and they play very nicely with InDesign, Illustrator and all the rest of them. I'm going to call this... Um, Hat and hair. And I'm going to save that onto my desktop so I can find it. Click on save. It says maximize compatibility. You can click that button. Just say OK. And now that's going to get saved. And in a minute, I'm going to use that in Photoshop. Now, before I do that, I'm just going to switch off the bottom layer. Now, I just knew there'd be one and see if there's any bits I've missed. So there's a little bit there. That's gone now. Sometimes you find it's a bit muddy, so you might need to go over it. This one looks pretty clean, so I'm quite happy with that. I'm going to switch back on that layer. And now I'm going to hit save again, just so it goes. And that will be the end of this part of this demonstration. Um, watch the other film in InDesign in a second. It will be up and it'll be, you can watch that one next. Thanks.